You've heard us give our predictions, but what's a fair expectation for Bill O'Brien in year one in Chestnut Hill? You are locked on Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome. This is Locked On Boston College, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. This is AJ Black. I'm your host here. And today, we're going to look at two big things. I want to look at what are fair expectations in year one for Bill O'Brien. What should we expect in terms of records? What should we expect for his offense, his defense, and everything else in between? I'll give you some fair data points that we should be looking for in year one in his term in Chestnut Hill. And then finally, there was news on Tuesday about a private equity group that's looking to get into college football to help with this new uh, revenue sharing and helping to put money infused into schools I'll explain why this is a horrible idea and that Boston College needs to get the heck away from that. So, Bill O'Brien, a year one coach, what are fair expectations? Now, for a lot of head coaches, you look at a guy like um, Bob Chesney at Indiana or even Fran Brown at Syracuse. These are first year head coaches at the F at the power five level, you know, Chesney, he coached at Holy cross. It's a big difference going from there to James Madison, even from, for, for Signetti, um, going from James Madison to Indiana, these, these coaches get a little bit more leeway. BC shouldn't need that. You're bringing in a head coach from, you know, a wide range of experience, whether it's as a coordinator with the Patriots or Alabama, or as a head coach with the Texans and Penn State, Bill O'Brien doesn't need. I feel like he doesn't need a a um, couple years to get things under his belt. He's coming into a program where there wasn't a lot of attrition due to the transfer portal. If you would ask me, who was like the big name that they lost? The biggest name probably is Joseph Griffin, and. They already had figured out his replacement by the time the transfer portal came out with Jerron Bradley, so it's not even a big loss there. He has a roster that is in place and intact after a 7-6 and six season. Now, he's a better coach than Jeff Halfley. He is. In every metric that you can think of, Bill O'Brien's going to be a better coach than Jeff Halfley. So he should be ready, even with what's coming ahead, to build here at Boston College. Now, the biggest question mark is not who he has on his roster. It's not Thomas Castellanos. It's not the defense. It's the schedule in front of him. I think it was Brad Bates that created the schedule that they have this year. It could have been Martin Jarman. But you look at who BC has to play, and they have a brutal schedule this year that includes Florida State, Michigan State, Missouri, Uh, UNC, Louisville, they've got a tough, tough, tough schedule. So when you're looking at this roster, you're looking at this schedule, and you see what Bill O'Brien has done in the past. He was big, uh, Big Ten Coach of the Year. That first year he took over after the, the Jerry Sandusky scandal got Joe Paterno fired. I look at this roster and I say to myself, just we're going to start with just overall wise. This should still be a bull team. There's that is an expectation for this year. Anything short of a bull that's six and six would be a disappointment for Boston College. I think this team is capable of winning some games that maybe folks aren't expecting. Like we mentioned SMU. Yeah, they beat them last year, and I know they were missing their starting quarterback, but there's no reason that BC couldn't beat them again. You you get UNC at the end of the year when Mac Brown has wilted like a flower. You get Florida State early in the year. You almost beat them last year, 
And I, I will argue to the death that DJU is not the, as good of a quarterback as Jordan Travis. Now, you get to play him on the road. I get that. But that could be an issue, right? I think 6-6 six and six should be the expectation for this team. Anything less than that is a disappointment. I don't care what the schedule. I don't care that it's still Bill O'Brien. They have too much talent. And I don't think the folks are giving them enough talent, uh, enough attention to the talent that they have. And we'll get into that in the second segment, that they're on both sides of the ball. This team should be able to battle much more than they did under Jeff Halfley. And when you have a coach and a coaching staff that is more adept and more ready to win those types of games, you're going to be in a better chance to get over that 6-6 six and six hump. I have faith, and I hope you guys all do too, that Bill O'Brien is the right guy. Watching him at practice, watching how his attention to detail, the, the scenarios that he puts his team through, the way that he is already getting his team prepared for anything, shows me that he's bringing like almost a Bill Belichickian mind to this season. And when you're going against Fran Brown, who has never been a head coach, when you're going against Western Kentucky, when you're going against Mac Brown, who is, you know, putting on the back nine at this point, I will take Bill O'Brien nine times out of 10. I think he's going to, he has, he has the ability to raise this team up even with a tough schedule to get them above where many folks are expecting them to be. He's brought a staff of established coaches, whether it's Tim Lewis. And yeah, I know Tim Lewis hasn't done a whole lot recently, but this isn't like bringing in like a green guy, like no offense to Sean Duggan, but Sean Duggan took over as a defensive coordinator with Azar Rahim. Neither of them really had much of any experience. I'll take guys that know what they're doing. Nine times out of ten. And I think that's a good thing. In a moment, I want to look at other factors that could go into what expectations we should have on offense and what off expectations we should have for you as fans and us that cover the team on the defense. We'll get into all of that in just a moment. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all your investment and retirement accounts all in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to land your entire portfolio with confidence. Now, I have my, my Schwab and a 401k with Fidelity. I use Yahoo Finance. It puts it all in one space. I'm terrible with passwords. I, I I got so many different passwords. I have a hard time remembering where the heck I put them. With Yahoo Finance, everything's all in one space. I just got to remember what I have there. It's all easy to find because Yahoo Finance has everything I need all in one spot. They've been the brand and the leader in investment knowledge for over 25 years. They have a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analysis ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Now, if you want to get in on Yahoo Finance, and you definitely do, you need to go to yahoofinance.com. Again, you're going to get everything from financial news to analysis at fi yahoofinance.com. One last time, get to that number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. Later on next week, we're going to have Mitch Wolf on, and he's going to dive into that offensive line. He's going to look, he's been, I, I sent Mitch, Mitch on a errand to go through offensive line tape, and he's been doing it. He's going to talk about Jude Bowery and how excited he is about him, his reservations and concerns about Jack Conley and everything else in between. We're going to have it up on Eagle Insider, and we're going to have him on the podcast to talk about it. So make sure you have all of those bookmarks so you don't miss that episode. It's going to be a good one. Now, we're talking about what factors could go into a successful season for BC. And in the first segment, I said right off the bat, they need to be a bowl-eligible team. They cannot take a step back from that. And I said, I have faith that the new head coach is the right guy to get them there. Now offensively, 
what could Bill O'Brien do to hit some benchmarks for the 2024 season? I look at Thomas Castellanos as a number exhibit a through F as reasons what, what he needs to fix. Castellanos is, is the, the most enjoyable t- player to watch on this team. He's electric. He makes lots of moves. He won games. I mean, look at that SMU game, the Syracuse game. He did it all, but he's, he has his limitations. It's not, it's not an unrealistic um, outlook to look at him and say last year he was what top 10 in the, in the, in the country in terms of uh, turnover th- eligible throws. He made bad throws throughout the year, but you brought in Bill, Bill O'Brien. You have Will Long as your offensive coordinator. You have John, D- Jonathan DiBiaso as your defense, uh, your, your quarterbacks coach. you got to hope those three, can look with Thomas Castellanos and teach him because this is college. That's what you do. Teach him improvement in terms of reading defenses and coverages, because there were times last year, he didn't look like he didn't know what he was doing. He came in in the summer. It's completely fair that he wouldn't at times, how to make his throws, how to make his progressions, all of that stuff. But you need to see his, his interceptions go down. Thomas Castellanos will become one of the better quarterbacks in the ACC if his turnovers decrease. And the way that I expect O'Brien has him throwing the ball, he's going to have the ball in his hand more often than not to throw it. And that's going to be the biggest factor. If he goes out there and O'Brien's asking him to throw the ball more, and he's throwing tons of interceptions, this could be a long year for Boston College. But if O'Brien can show him how to use his legs in combination with the, the, the wide receivers and tight ends that he has, and I think he's got a good group to grow with, Castellanos' improvement could be a huge factor and a check mark that you could make in terms of an expectation for 2024. Progression, that's a check mark. Progression for Thomas Castellanos, that's a different story. Now, the defensive side of the ball. This is not Bill O'Brien's, um, this is not his bread and butters. That's why he has to bring in other guys to do it. What do we need to look for on this defense? It's identity. Because under Halfley, the last three or four years, if you were to ask me, since 2020, what has been the strong suit of BC's defense? I don't think I could answer you. They're, they have not been strong in turnovers. They have not been strong in sacks. They haven't been strong against the pass. They haven't been strong against the run. They have just been inconsistent everywhere in terms of those factors. So can Tim Lewis, the new defensive coordinator, along with Bill O'Brien, find out what this team can do and do it well? Whether that's playing with a fire under their butt to, to cause turnovers. And yeah, maybe they get burned every now and then, but they're causing turnovers. They're getting balls um, in enemy territory more often. Because when you do that with Thomas Castellanos, it's going to get you points. It's going to get you points. It's, it's, a, it's a fact of life right here. Or are they going to be, you know, more active in the pass rush? Are they going to be stout against the run? The defense needs to figure out what they can do well. Because for so many years, we have not seen them do anything specifically really well. That will be a factor of success. And you've got the guys there that can do it. You've got Donovan Azaraku, who seems like he's a ticking time bomb in terms of success. Under Halfley last year, he didn't, he was, you know, he had good years. I mean, you look at his pro football focus grade, it was great. You know, if you're if I were to ask you like game changing plays other than the SMU game, he probably had one of the game where he had a lot of plays. And that was the EVA game, right? Other than that, he was kind of he was kind of quiet. We need a guy that reminds you of the of the um, BJ Rajis or the Mark Herzlegs or Harold Landry or Zach Allen, someone who's a game changer. If they can, if that's Azaraku and they can, if they can activate that and make him that player this year, that is going to be an expectation of, uh, and, and a measure of success for next year. Finally, an expectation for 2024 is an improved recruiting class. I've been, I've been hammering this on our site. 
on here that that O'Brien is bringing a buzz to this program that is going to need that's going to elicit hopefully a better response out of recruits. Last year, Jeff Halfley brought in a class of what, like 13 players, and some of them were just really last minute as he lost a ton of them on decommitments at the very end. And they ended up in the 90s in terms of the recruiting class. As a, pro, a Power 5 program or Power 4 program at this point, you can't have that. O'Brien has a couple of really strong recruiters right now, I think. The two top ones, in my opinion, watching what they're doing in terms of getting top-notch talent is Daryl Wyatt at wide receiver. Not No surprise he did that last year. And Ray Brown at cornerback. They're bringing in some really talented players that could help elevate the recruiting class. But don't sleep on guys like Jonathan DiBiaso, Matt Applebaum, and Savon Huggins. Uh, they also, and, and, and Jeff, Kem- Jeff, Kem- Jeff Comision is also a, a guy that's going to bring in some names. So you combine the guys that you know versus the guys that have a ton of potential, and you hope that your recruiting class, which should be a lot bigger, it should be going closer to that 25 mark this year, will get BC higher in the, in terms of their um, recruiting class. Now, would I say it's top 25? No, they're not going to be a top 25 class. But could they be top 40? Sure. With this, the amount of recruits they get, some of the quality recruits, if they can land them, this could be a top 40 class. And I don't think that is a I, I, 40, I think, is a little aggressive at this point. He's got some work to do in terms of rebuilding some pathways in the recruiting class cr- classes that he's bringing in. But say top 45. Top 45 recruited class for, for Bill O'Brien this year should be an expectation. I think that could happen. Now, in our final segment, some weird news came out on Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, about private equity firms trying to get in on college football. I'll explain why this is all a terrible idea. We'll get into all of that in just a moment. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Were you watching that Celtics game? Did you take the Celtics? I hope you didn't. Uh, but it took a Jalen Brown miracle three to cover that spread. And it looks like it's going to be a tough season, so series. But with a second game coming in in Boston, are you feeling that the, the Celtics can keep this one going? You can take the money line. You can take the spread, which probably be like, what, like five and a half points? I haven't seen the new one yet. But right now, if you were to get that, new customers are going to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com and make every playoff shot count with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. This is Locked On Boston College, and again, we are in the offseason, but there's big national news that's going on that is changing the landscape of college football. And the bigger news on Wednesday, after the news of uh, paying and revenue sharing with college athletes was this news article that came out by, I think it was Ross Dellinger again, that Drew Weatherford, a former Florida State uh, quarterback, and I believe he's a Florida State trustee at this point, is part of an equity group that's trying to reach out. And he's apparently reached out to 50 different schools to try to infuse private equity money into the schools to help them with this new uh, revenue sharing scheme. I'm going to tell you folks, I don't even need to see the details of all this. When the tentacles of private equity get into anything, it's never a good thing. Whether it's what you saw with Sports Illustrated, whether it's what, what you're seeing with some of these other companies that are all struggling like SB Nation or, I, you know, even some of the bigger companies, I think some, you know, like, Um, There's there's bigger companies out there that have had private equity parts of them. They a lot of times it feels like they put money in and then they just take everything out. All the stuff that you loved and and, and enjoyed are going to get sucked out of it. Right. So I look at this and they want to put, you know, I think it was like 20 million dollars into some some schools. My hope 
is that Boston College sees this and runs the other way. Getting private equity involved in college sports is not a good thing in any measure, any way you cut it, it's not good. Because, yeah, right now you get Drew Weatherford out there saying that everything's going to be copacetic. It's just a way to give money to the schools. But you know, further down, there's going to be a bill to pay. The school is going to have to pay those people back, and it's not going to be pretty. They're going to want things, you know, either expedited or they're going to have demands of the program, whether it's a firing a coach or putting extra NIL money into something, whatever it is, you're adding in an outside agency that's going to infuse money, but also use that almost like a mob boss to infuse their will on whatever school takes their dirty money. It's not dirty money, but it takes their money. You know what I mean? So my hope through all of this, Boston College has an enormous endowment. It puts them in a much different spot than a school like Florida State who is hemorrhaging money and can't figure out how to keep things going at times. My hope is that even with revenue sharing, Boston College will figure out a way to get money into this program to support the, the the teams and whatnot that they want to support and not have this become something that private equity jumps in and helps to bail them out because I, you know, it, 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 it does remind me of like a bot mob boss, right? Like, yeah, a mob boss is going to give you a favor, but if you've ever watched any movie, whether it's the Godfather or Goodfellas or whatever Sopranos, when they give you that money and they saying it's whatever, they're always going to ask for a favor in return. And that favor is going to put you in a spot that you don't want to be in. This is not a good spot for college sports. Private equity is not a good thing. And hopefully most of these ADs saw this and said, nope. But my big worry is that in just from the as a college football fan in general, is there's going to be enough schools that are going to see this and go, oh, we need the money, and they're going to do it. And that's not good. So I'm not sure where this is going to go. Maybe this is a one-time thing, but as the as college sports continues their march towards, you know, employ, you know, having full-time employees, revenue sharing, all that stuff. This whole system is going to change, and the way that they look at money is going to change. And so I could see schools taking this up and thinking this is a good thing. I just think in like 10 years, they're going to realize what they made was a deal with the devil. All right, this is AJ Black. Thank you all so much for listening today. I'll be back again tomorrow with any Boston College news. It's our last episode before Memorial Day. And we are only a week away from the start of official visit season. Boston College football is going to have at least nine or ten recruits on campus in the last weekend of May for their official visits. These are the guys that could be committing. I already have a crystal ball in for one. There's another one I feel really good about. We'll talk all about that and get everything else here on Locked on Boston College. Your team every day.